dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. That one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. We will be when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Good morning and welcome to the CAC celebration of the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., Today, January 15th, is the date of Dr. King's birth. Had he lived, he would have celebrated his 84th birthday today. It's hard to believe that the events captured in the video took place half a century ago. This year, we will mark the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. Which, he, which was delivered in August of 1963 to more than 200,000 civil rights supporters from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. The speech is considered one of the most powerful of the 20th century and marked a defining moment in the civil rights movement and in American history. In seeking equal opportunities for African Americans, Martin Luther King Jr. ignited movements for equal treatment among women, Hispanics, people with disabilities, and many other groups. His calls for equal treatment under the law change and improve the lives of millions of Americans, not just for African Americans, but for all people of our country. He showed us how to seek change by working within the system while still challenging the injustices within that system to change and improve the world. Dr. King's life, his message, and the changes for which he fought so hard still challenge us today. But 50 years after Dr. King blazed the trail, we still haven't reached our destination even in our school district. In our work in public education, we have a unique opportunity and a particular responsibility for making progress toward realizing Dr. King's dream of equal access and opportunity for all Americans. Our job is to ensure that every student in AISD receives a quality education, regardless of skin color or zip code. In his Future of Integration speech in 1964 at Oberlin College, Dr. King told students, the time is always right to do what's right. In this new year, as we face significant decisions by our leadership, both locally on the school board and at the state level in the legislature, no time is more important than now to put aside any political or philosophical differences and simply do right for our students, the future of AISD and our great state of Texas. And thus, the theme of our celebration today is the time is always right to do the right thing. I know that when it comes to opening doors and ensuring a high quality education for each and every one of our students, the people of Austin will stand with us in doing what's right. Over the past several years, we've made some progress in recognizing inequalities in AISD, but as Dr. King knew better than anyone, the process for change can be frustrating and slow. 
We must not listen to those who say that change can wait until next year or the year after that, because every year we wait to make a decision. More students will not graduate, will drop out of school, and we will have failed to do our job of preparing all students to take advantage of the opportunities before them. To our school community, especially our staff, I want to thank you for standing with me in the faith and the belief that we can still do the right thing to eliminate the achievement gaps for all students, to ensure that every kid is meeting and exceeding expectations set by this community, so that every student leaves this district with not only a diploma in hand, but a promising future for their life. We see signs that we are doing the right thing. When the number of Hispanic students going on to post-secondary education after they graduate increases seven percentage points in just one year, we are doing the right thing. When achievement on the star for African American and Hispanic students increases several percentage points, and in some cases double digits in every subject area as it did last year, we are doing the right thing. When we changed our model for discretionary removals from the classroom, which was sending kids to our alternative learning center and disproportionately affected African American and special education students, decreased by 34% in just one year, we are doing the right thing. When graduation rates continue to increase for all students across the district and will again this year, but most importantly, among English language learners and economically disadvantaged students, our kids increased their graduation rate by more than four percentage points in just one year. We are doing the right thing. So in AISD, I believe we do honor the legacy of Dr. King, and we honor him again today as I invite you to continue to join our school district in embracing his ideals. Whatever you do to support our students in schools makes a difference in their lives, and for that, he would be deeply proud of us. There are three talented AISD students, Kiana Mack, eighth grade, avid student at Keeling, Catrell Gaines, senior at Travis High School, Devin Domino, senior at Austin High School, who also embrace these ideals, which you will hear about when they read their essays based on today's theme. After they have read their essays, the Doby Middle School Choir, directed by Julie Aaron, will close today's event with a musical tribute in celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King. On behalf of the Austin Independent School District, I thank you for being with us on this special day, and thank you for all that you do for our community's children. God bless you, and we appreciate you being here this morning. Hi, my name is Kiana Mack. Do the right thing. A wise man once said, the time is always right to do the right thing, meaning always and never be afraid to do the right thing. I know that sometimes it's hard because maybe you don't want to lose friends or popularity, or maybe because of peer pressure. When you are deciding whether to do the right thing, remember, cowardice acts. Is it safe? Expediency acts. Is it polite? Vanity acts. Is it popular? And conscious acts. Is it right? Stand for what's right, even if it means standing alone. Sometimes when it comes to me doing the right thing, I think to myself, could I hold to my own beliefs, principles, and morals, even when I know I, I would lose popularity, friends, or different people that I care about over my decisions? Yes, I can. Then I think, but what if someone starts bullying me or starts spreading rumors? Let them. If I know it's not true, it won't hurt me. When it comes to people taking advantage over others, I do what I can to help. You should too. Always remember, doing the right thing starts with knowing what the right things are. Take responsibility for your actions. And don't let anyone stop you from doing the right thing. There is no answer to what the right thing is. It is as complex as any social or moral question. Yet, in its pursuit, we are educating ourselves on the diversity of goodness and the need for common understanding. Who knows what's right? 
Everyday humans are flooded with emotions, desires, and thoughts, which are often in conflict. Good morning. My name is Kentrell Gaines, and today's theme will be always to do the right thing. The time is always right to do the right thing. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Not only will we have to repent for the sins of bad people, but we also will have to repent for the appalling silence of good people. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you just have to keep moving forward. Never, never be afraid to do what's right, especially if the well-being of a person or animal is at stake, as spoken by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. There's always a time and place to do the right thing, whether it's helping an elderly person across the street or aiding a child as they fall. Doing the right thing doesn't always have to consist of you aiding someone else. It can always mean, also mean helping yourself. Let's use myself as an example. My name is Kentro Gaines, and I'm the number one football recruit coming out of William B. Travis High School. But in reality, I am no different than anyone else in our school. I have always tried to push myself to reach my goals, number one being on that graduation stage come early June and head on to college of my choice, which will allow me to earn a degree and play football for them. I'm pretty sure you're wondering, yeah, he's pretty persistent and has had success. And that may be true in some cases, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. Early in high school, I didn't push myself where it really counts, in my grades and in the hearts of others. I currently have a 2.7 GPA or a B average. Yeah, it's okay, but if I had pushed myself in my studies or if I had listened more in class, I may have had an offer right here at home at the good old University of Texas. Instead, I will start my journey elsewhere and work hard to reach a Division I school. I was invited here today by my school's principal, Mr. Ty Davidson. He, he asked a number of seniors to participate in giving a speech to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in front of the superintendent and board of AISD. Many of my friends said no, saying how nervous they were and how nervous they would be and couldn't do it. Well, I may be a little nervous, but I want to do the right thing and finish my senior year off strong, and there's no better way to do it than to pay respect to such a great man and fulfill one of my personal goals. To conclude, I would like to let everyone know that even the average person can do the right thing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Devin Domino, and I'm a senior at Stephen F. Austin High School. At first, I would like to thank Ms. Compion and the rest of the Austin High staff for letting me be here. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, never, never be afraid to do what's right, especially if the well-being of a person or animal is at stake. I am sure at one time in our lives, we have been told to stand up for what is right, even if it means standing alone. But do we have the courage to stand alone for what is right? Dr. King did not only have courage, he had a dream, a dream of humanity becoming one. If Dr. King had not stood up for what he believed in, where would America be today? Maybe we would have more wars, our hate, our fear, and less peace. Standing up for what we believe in will make us stronger people, but doing the right thing will change the way we live today. In this modern society, we are either followers or leaders. Dr. King is viewed as one of America's leaders, a leader who risked his life for our rights. Right is right even if no one is doing it, and wrong is wrong even if everyone is doing it. That is a quote I live my life by every day. There is no need to follow the crowd simply because everyone seems to be doing so. If someone was being ridiculed or picked on, would you stand up for that person or would you just turn your back and ignore it? Courage will allow one to defend any person in any circumstances. Sometimes it is hard to stand up for what is right, especially when you are standing alone. If you didn't study for that test and you look at someone else's paper, or you don't have any money for that candy bar you really want, so you steal it. Making the right and wrong decision comes up in a lot of short stories in everyday life. I can count on one hand how many times I have been right, but then I second guess myself. I made myself think I was wrong because everybody else believed I was wrong. 
Sometimes I ask myself, could I hold on to my own beliefs, principles, and morals, even when I know I would lose popularity or friends over my decision? We all ha have numerous characteristics that define our personality. But when we go beyond and search deeper into the depths of our souls, we find distinctive traits that one can consider our greatest strength. I have learned that my greatest strength is expression. An expressive person has a verbally adapt personality. They are engaging, accommodating, and supportive of others. He or she loves to be one of the groups and is always ready for something new and exciting. I have learned that people will, will respect me more when I stand up for what is right. My parents have always trusted me. They have been there for me and have given me freedom to soar and to breathe. That's how I became the person who is standing before you today. Doing the right thing means sacrifice and being there for people in need, such as helping the homeless or volunteering at an animal shelter. Doing the right thing starts with knowing what is right. As we come into a new year, let us all come together and do what we believe to be right, and not necessarily to follow in someone else's footsteps. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity to have us here. My name is Julie Arend. I've been teaching at Dobie Middle School for eight years. This is the Dobie Middle School UIL Choir. I have to tell you, the uh, successes that have happened at Dobie have been we have gotten sweepstakes at UIL in choir twice now. Once The first time in 2009 as a non-varsity UIL choir group, which bumped us up into varsity, which meant we had to choose more difficult pieces of music and were rated on a more stringent um, category. And then again in 2011 when we hit uh, sweepstakes, which is a huge, it's a huge accomplishment. It means that the kids at Dobie Middle School sing just as well as any other school, middle school in the district. Last year we got straight ones in our sight singing and we almost got sweepstakes again. The judging was pretty tough last year. So I'm really proud of these kids for, well that's my excuse. <laughs> I'm really proud of these kids for having worked so hard. They've really worked hard to be very disciplined and professional as singers, and I hope you enjoy. Oh, oh, oh. 
uh, thank you for coming out again today. I also just want to recognize our board members uh, who were able to um, be with us, our board president, Vincent Torres, Amber Aylins, um, Cheryl Bradley, and Jamie Mathias. So I'm not sure if anybody else is in the back. But thank you for coming out today. We really appreciate it. Also, we wish you a very happy new year and, and a great school year. And uh, if this is any example of what your efforts are doing, we rock. So, <laughs> so thank you for coming out and for, for uh, bringing, us. and thank you so much for sharing your beautiful mind and beautiful thoughts with us as well. So um, I do expect to see you crossing the stage. And um, I hope to hear about more scholarships and things of that sort as well. So I'll be grilling you uh, at graduation. Ready? Okay, great. Thank you so much. And anti there. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.